Magandang magandang buhay sa ating lahat no. Ako nga po pala si Chinchin Mercado and this is my first time doing a podcast. I hope that you will enjoy listening for our topic for today, the history of transportation in the Philippines. So, alam ko naman na may idea na kayo kung ano yung mga transportation dito sa Pilipinas, di ba? So, simulan natin sa pagtukoy kung ano nga bang transportation. Transportation, the movement of goods and person from place to place and the various means by which such movement is accomplished, the growth of the ability, and the need to transport large quantities of goods or numbers of people over long distances at high speed in comfort, and safety has been an index of civilization and in particular of technological progress. So, there are different modes of transportation in the Philippines. So, kabilang daw dito ang roadways, railways, waterways, at airways transportation. So, unahin na natin ang roadways transportation dito sa Pilipinas. So, unang-una sa lahat ay jeepney. In the early 1950s, jeepney began making the rounds in Manila. Soon, they become a solution to the post for public transportation problem. Filipinos lengthened the American vehicle to accommodate more passengers and attach a roof to protect them from the scorching Philippine heat. Jeepneys began flying the street of Manila after World War II when the U.S. soldier left thousands of unserviceable jeeps. At ang jeepney po do ay tinaguri ang the four months transport in the Philippines dahil sa mababang senior ng pamasahe sa mga pasahero. So, ang pangalawa naman ay ang kalesa. A kalesa is a two-wheeled horse-drawn carriage used in the Philippines. It is commonly vividly painted and decorated. It was a primary mode of public and private transportation during the colonial era of the Philippines. But in modern times, they largely only survive as a tourist attractions. It was first introduced in the Philippines during the 18th century by the Spanish. During the said era, the Kalesa served as a luxurious mode of transportation that only the nobles, rich, and high-rank officials can afford. The carriage served as a status symbol and mark of prestige during those times. Owning a Kalesa back then is similar to having a luxury car of the day. For several years, the Kalesa is known as the adopted king of the road until the arrival of the jeepney during the American period. While commuters nowadays have chosen to take modern modes of transportation for personal travel, the Kalesa can still be seen playing the roots of Binondo and Intramuros. Philippine life and culture will never be the same without the Kalesa. It is part of the Philippine history and its importance can never be overlooked. Regardless of the challenges of modernization, the Kalesa will always provide a unique mode of transport that is environmentally friendly. Ang pangatla naman ay ang pedicab. The pedicab, commonly known in the Philippines as the pajak or trisikad, is a travel bicycle with a covered sidecar used to transport the public in rural and suburban areas where there are smaller roads, although commonly used all throughout the country. The pedicab is a mixture of words pedal, referring to how the bike is powered, and cub, referring to the sidecar. The pedicab traces its roots to the cycle rickshaw that was borrowed from Japan, replacing the impractical manfold rickshaw in Asia. The cycle rickshaw boom began in 1920s in Singapore. Some would believe that the pedicab is the precursor to the tricycle, but the exact date of the introduction of both modes of transportation in the Philippines is unknown. Ang apat naman ay tricycle. The tricycle is a Philippine transportation vehicle that rolls in roads and alleys. While on second thought, it rolls even highways at times. It can go from one street corner to the next, or one town to the next, or one city to the next. There are times when it goes from province to province. When the tricycle was first used a Philippine transportation vehicle, no one seems to know. A few claim they haven't seen the thing before the Japanese time. Many tricycles started appearing on the road scene after World War II. Others declare it almost coexisted with the converted GI Army jeeps. Accordingly, excess body parts left after the conversions were used to assemble sidecars 
attached to motorcycles, and thus the tricycle that has been known since in the Philippine transportation. The tricycle is a Philippine transportation vehicle that is so versatile. It is adaptable in rural and urban application. It can serve passengers, rain or shine. Ang panglima naman ay ang habal-habal. The habal-habal known as a motorcycle taxis in other parts of the world. The habal habal has extended seats, often sideways but a T-shaped crossbeam. It is also colloquially referred to as Skylabs, in reference to the space station deployed by NASA during the 1970s. It is a common mode of transportation in the mountainous or remote areas of the Philippines. Ang pang-anin naman ay ang taxi. Taxi cabs of the Philippines are one of the modes of transportation in the country. They are regulated by the Department of Transportation, the Land Transportation Office, and the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board. Enrico Montesarat E. Calvo founded the first taxi company in the Philippines in 1930. The first cab was a French Citroën. In 1950s, most taxis were American cars like Chevrolet, Ford, Plymouth, and Eastwood Baker. The following decade, they were Mercedes-Benz 180D, Fugat 403, Austin Cambridge, and Toyota Toyota Tayara taxis. In the 1950s, a taxi rate was a 15 centavos flag down and a 5 centavos per half kilometer. At ang panghuli sa roadways transportation of the Philippines ay ang bus. Ricardo de Lara Paras and his brother-in-law Ferrancio P. Buan established a pioneering bus service in the post-World War II Philippines. Philippine Rabbit Bus Company, which was incorporated as Philippine Rabbit Bus Line exactly 11 years later, came into existence less than two years after the liberation of the Philippines from a brutal Japanese occupation and only about eight weeks after the formal American relinquishment of sovereignty over the Southeast Asian island country. Perez developed the idea of the bus company during his wartime service in a Filipino guerrilla unit under the command of the U.S. Army in Luzon. Perez's job included assessing the routes and logistics that would allow allied military personnel to easily travel from one location to another in the region. Paras realized that he could translate his geographical knowledge into a lucrative transportation enterprise and following the end of the war, persuaded Buan on the feasibility of such a business. Throughout most of 1946, the two men used one-time U.S. Army trucks to move corn, rice, and other produce to public markets within Luzon. Paras and Buan, however, eventually became aware of a move pressing transportation made when many local residents who is customarily relied on their own feet or animal drawn carrots for mobility were requesting and receiving rides on those vehicles to get to various destinations. Philippine Rabbit Bus Company was subsequently launched, with the first run traveling from the municipality of Moncada in the central Luzon province of Tarlac to the shopping district of Divisoria in the Philippines capital city of Manila in southwestern Luzon. The company, which owes its name to the speed and agility of rabbits, is now officially known as the Philippine Rabbit Bus Lines Incorporation. It continues to serve Metro Manila and the provinces of Tarlac, Pampanga, and Pangasinan. Tumungo naman tayo sa railways transportation dito sa Pilipinas. The Philippine Railway Network consists of two commuter lines provided by the Philippine National Railways and three urban mass transit lines operated by the Light Rail Transit Authority and Rail Transit Corporation, all of which are located in Luzon. Within the last century, there were operating intercity rail lines extending from Manila, both north and south operated by the PNR. On July 12, 1980, the country's president, Ferdinand E. Marcos, created the Light Ray Transit Authority, or LRTA, as a government agency. The chairman was the first lady and the governor of Metro Manila, Imelda Romualdez Marcos. 
This LRTA combined its activities to the determining policies, to the regulation and fixing of fares, and to the planning of extensions to the system. The project was called MetroRail and was operated by a sister company of the former tramway company Meralco, called the Metro Incorporation. Tumungo naman tayo sa waterways transportation dito sa Pilipinas. Ang una sa lahat ay ang balangay. The balanghay or butuan boat is a plank boat adjoined by a curved outflank edge through fins and dowels. It was first mentioned in the 16th century in the Chronicles of Tigafeta and is known as the oldest free Hispanic water crop found in the Philippines. They are found throughout the Philippines and were used largely as trading ships up until the colonial era. Pangalawa naman ay bangkas. The bangka boat, also in locally known as bangka, pump boats, or baroto, are the primary water transportation of locals in the Philippines. Bangka boats are commonly used for fishing, transporting goods, and island hopping tours. If farmers have carabao for farming, fishers have bangka boats for fishing. Bangkas being the archipelago composed of 7,107 islands, it is inevitable to use some form of transport that will take you from one island to another. For short inter-island travel, the motorized bangkas had the first option. It was primarily used by fishermen before but today, it is used as a popular means of transportation. Ang panghuli sa waterways transportation in the Philippines ay ang Pasig Ferry Boat. As early 14th century, Pasig Boat was main transport system to people living in Manila. The Pasig River Ferry Service is the only water-based transportation in Metro Manila, Philippines that cruises the Pasig River from Pinagbuhatan in Pasig to Intramuros in the city of Manila. The system was owned and operated by a private company, SAC Optical Transport Services Incorporated. Tumungo naman tayo sa panghuling modes of transportation in the Philippines, ang Airways Transportation. In 1941, the first domestic airline, Philippine Airlines, was founded. PAL is now the flag carrier airline of the Philippines. As it is the sole domestic airline, Philippine Airlines was virtually monopolizing the country's aviation industry. And PAL continues to dominate the industry by having the monopoly on domestic travels. The airline was given a new franchise. However, under a provision that the government regulated affairs, the industry was liberalized with the establishment of domestic and international civil aviation liberalization policy, and the government control was removed. And in 1999, competing airlines increased. Due to this, false market share decreased. In addition, according to the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, the country has 71 airports, 11 of them can handle international flights, 32 of them only accommodate domestic travel, and 28 of them are primarily used for general navigation. The most prominent of this airport is the Ninoy Aquino International Airport, which is located in Pasay City, it has four terminals and can handle hundreds of both international and domestic flights every day, making it by far the busiest airport in the country. So that was the history of transportation in the Philippines. I'm hoping that you enjoy listening to my podcast and you have learned from it. Once again, this is Jinjin Mercado ending the first episode of my podcast. Bye!